Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about this guy with regards to developing 3D printed objects. So, uh, for those of you out there who have been into woodworking, probably know what this is. So, this is a contour gauge. Now, the idea behind these is it's got a bunch of fingers on here. And this is a plastic version. I've got a metal version laying around the shop somewhere, the wood shop out in the garage somewhere. Uh, but I got this plastic version too. And the idea is, is what you do is you move it into a contour and it matches the contour and then it runs the contour out here and then you can trace this pattern onto a piece of wood cut it out what have you now one of the things I've been using this quite a bit uh, for 3d printing now what do I mean for that I'll tell you what I've got a little bit of a problem I'm gonna share it with you and let's take a look how I use this to solve it so one of the things we've just did some remodeling on our master bath and I had this TV in the master bath uh, and my wife wanted an upgrade, so we got a much, much bigger TV. We now have a big screen in our bathroom. But uh, aside from that, um, this is this is kind of it's still a great TV. It's got HDMI in, and a lot of uses that I can use it here in the shop or my office as an external monitor. Uh, one of the things, though, this has been mounted on a wall. Uh, forever in a day and I no longer have the feet to it uh, to sit it on the thing so the thing is while it sort of sets it wants to fall over because it doesn't have any feet so how do I solve this problem well the first thing I was going to do was I was going to use the Verza port so I don't knock everything back here and then just build a bracket that goes straight down but then it covers up the power in the HDMI port which I need so that didn't work so I had to come up with something else so I decided to come up with something because on the bottom I don't know if I can get it in here in both frames and here there were feet that went to slide in so I thought why don't I replicate something like that but one of the things and I don't know if you can see here is this, this uh, piece here at the bottom runs at an angle so what I decided is I'm going to take my contour gauge and then I'm simply going to push my contour gauge on here like this and well I have to do it so I get the correct angle and so it's going to be more like that so I now have the angle for this I'm going to set the TV aside for a minute get it out of the way and I'm actually going to push this little piece down um, and then now, as you can see here, I now have this angle transferred here. And then what I can do is I line this up. Well, actually I actually had, had gone the other way uh, when I did this. But what I did is I transferred the angle to this piece. And, sorry, I'm going to get it straight here sooner or later. Sort of like that. It's kind of like a Rubik's Cube. Anyways, let's see. Yep, we got that in the picture. So now I just took a pen took my handy dandy pen and I trace this out and I'm going to go and I'm going to scan this into the computer and I'm not going to belabor this because I've showed shown a couple um, episodes I'm using Inkscape to create 3D parts but I'm going to show you how I scan this and how I turn this into an actual part so I tell you what let's hop into the computer a little bit I'll show you how to do this then we'll head over to the printer we'll look at it having been printed and probably do a little bit of a time lapse and then we'll come back here at the bench and see how it all comes together Okay, so here we are in the computer, and uh, what I've done is, uh, after you saw the sketch that I made from the contour gauge, here it is in the computer, and I've imported it into Inkscape, and I've shown this before, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, uh, so just, you know, kind of long story short, what I've now done is I've built my model around this, so uh, as you can see here, I've just kind of sketched things aligning uh, the model. I've uh, made it a little bit larger to give me some wiggle room here between the, uh, uh, you know, the, the TV, the front and the back. I've also made this section a little bit taller to kind of handle any, any uh, cantilevering to the back, uh, you know, because I do have a rise here. Uh, also, I made note here of the size of the TV, so when I was creating the uh, structure here, I made sure that I had it at the right scale, and I did. And then I tossed in a couple holes here to run uh, quarter 20 bolts through if I wanted to provide a little bit more rigidity if I happened to need it, but uh, no biggie. So what I did is in a typical fashion, I did an export of uh, this to an SVGA file. SVG file, sorry, not SVGA. I deal with something called the SVGA. Never mind. Anyways, um, 
So what I've gone ahead and I've done is then I've imported it into uh, Tinkercad and we have it here once it loads and I've just uh, replicated the part you can see the design here so really nice so again use the contour gauge to find this angle and to set, kind of set this up and, and also set up the general height of these um, spires or whatever you want to call these uprights if you will and so tell you what we're going to send this out to the uh, Creality CR10 and we're going to print these out and then we'll see you back at the bench so here we are at the Creality CR10. So we've printed these out. It actually came out pretty good. And one of the things I just kind of wanted to show the, a little bit of the general setup of the CR10. Now I could have printed these. Uh, they're not that big. I could have probably gone to Tarantula or even the Wanhao over here. But I wanted to give this a run because uh, I haven't been using this a lot lately. And one of the things I wanted to share is you can kind of see the setup uh, that I have for time lapse on here. So uh, you might remember I did a video a while back on installing the cable release and this camera mount and you see I get my uh, uh, 4S. Now one of the things I had to do with the 4S is actually go with uh, a fisheye lens to get this out and as I've been doing this I'll be running the uh, uh, video, the time lapse up in the corner. So not that exciting especially since I went with clear PLA for this but it did come out very well. Uh, this printer really is a nice printer for getting some quality prints out of it. So uh, and with the PEI bed uh, comes out really really nice. So again really happy with uh, the performance of this guy so we have the uh, pieces here uh, part of it a little bit I put these a little bit close to the edge here but they're they're pretty much fine uh, the general idea is is I could stick a bolt through there if I wanted so anyways tell you what let's take these and head over there to the bench and uh, put them on the TV and let, let's see how it all works okay so here we are back we've got the pieces there we go. Now for the moment of truth. Do they fit? So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn this up on end. And boom. And boom. They fit like a rubber glove. And I mean, and hopefully you can see how they fit on here if I get this because it's rather close to the camera. But they fit just like a rubber glove. And also what I want to show is see how I measured up on the front so it comes up to the top here so it doesn't come into the bezel. But yet in the back, I've got a little bit of extra height, as I talked about in the design. And I tell you what, this thing just sits perfectly, just like this. And it looks pretty cool being the um, clear PLA. So, you, you know, again, you can push it. It very sturdy. Now, one of the things I don't think I mentioned, and this goes out to my friend Robert, RJ Make. So I definitely have gussets in here. Robert, I did that just for you. I knew you'd be looking for them. So gussets there are. And uh, again, it turned out really great. I did it at about 20% infill. The finish looks really cool. You know, I did it about 20% infill, I think, as I mentioned. But you can kind of see the honeycombing through here, and it really looks neat. Um, and so again, you know, maybe you find yourself with a TV or a monitor or something like this that, you know, you don't have feet for. They've, you know, found their way into the trash or something else like this. This is a great opportunity. I'm going to actually um, do this for a couple other monitors I have laying around. Uh, because the other thing I forgot to mention is one of the things I wanted with this is to be able to slide kind of like into a shelf. And so I the... The monitor standard feet that came with it would raise it up, and I really didn't want that. And that's one of the things that determined this height is, so again, I could slide it in, in a shelf area and then hook it to a computer. So anyways, very happy with this. Um, and if you've got any questions, hey, you know the routine. Hit me up down below. Give it a big thumbs up if you find this interesting. Now, since this goes to this particular make a TV, I'm not going to put these up on Thingiverse, but you kind of got the idea. And I tell you what, um, this is going to find... Uh, a lot more uses. I've, uh, you know, you'll see be seeing this in the future quite a bit more. I've got a couple other projects which I really don't have handy here on the bench. Uh, but one of the things, again, you know, because this was a rather simple contour, uh, again, you can do a rather complex, whoops, if I flip this around, you can do a rather, not, not saying that this is a complex contour, but again, you can transfer rather complex shapes and then uh, trace this out, scan it in, and then what you can do is extrude the shape 
uh, in, in something like OpenSKit. So say you have a, a rosette block or something like that that you want to replicate in 3D printing because this is one of the things you'll probably see me do a little bit more of this in the near future, especially since I got the bigger printer, the CR10, is you could take a rosette block, model it with this, extrude it circularly with something like OpenSKit, and print them with wood PLA and, and nail or screw them up or glue them up, etc. Um, and you can create some really kind of, kind of neat stuff. And you'll see some of that coming in the future. But anyways, for now, thumbs up, subscribe, swag shop up there, check out the new stuff, and hit me up in the comments below. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.